this content is for kids. It's not uh, for kids. No, uh, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. And we're live, so greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. the World. I'm Septum Sin. This is Kodabuki Jake. And we're Hi. here to show you what we got. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. Oh boy. Again. <laughs> yeah, we had a bit of an issue last time. Get used to disappointment. It was YouTube being YouTube. I don't want to go on a rant here, but America's foreign policy makes about as much sense as Beowulf having sex with Robert Fulton at the First Battle of Antietam. I mean, when a neoconservative defenestrates, it's like Raskalnikov filibuster deoxymonohydroxinate. What the hell does rant mean? We had been doing trailers, and they'd just been taking the money for our videos, which was nothing. So I was okay with them kind of, you know, doing that. Oh, oh that's fantastic. How do you turn your face so red so fast? Fuck yeah. But then they decided on a couple of the trailers that, nah, we're just going to take your stuff down and because of that I couldn't even because uh, this stuff goes directly to YouTube then I download it and then I edit it so I wasn't even to grab it able to grab it to edit out the stuff they just like <clears throat> nope too much so we're going to do some of the same ones for me uh, a lot of the same ones uh, for him we're going to add a couple uh, but you guys didn't see that uh, stuff so uh, you guys get to share in it I love it when a plan comes together. But I'm going to start with one I talked mm -hmm. about last week, which uh, you guys didn't hear about. But um, and that is Schusterman Levine, a boxing fable. This is one. Uh, this is the uh, 24. Was it 21st anniversary edition? So this one was actually released. Um, I've got the original release sitting up on my shelf that was in the library so uh this is a mockumentary about a boxer by anadinia films this is my favorite film of mm -hmm. it. and it is also in my uh top films of all time uh list so mm. I, I would suggest that if you like mockumentary style films and you like uh a small budget cinema you should check this out it's about mm -hmm. a boxer who is not uh, so much of a um, a uh, boxer, but kind of a, a failure at boxing. He should have been a plumber. He should have been a plumber. And if you <laughs> really like to know more about this film, we actually did a discussion on Inside Movies Galore. And on Inside Movies Galore, uh, we did an interview with the director of the film, uh, Dave and I did, and it was a great interview. I've talked with the person multiple times. I cover, I do a special feature for this uh, site called the Anhedonia Project, which is about all the films that this director does. And no, I don't love everything this guy does. And you can tell if you go there on that. But uh, really great guy, probably his best film ever. Don't let the cover fool you. It's not animated. My father received this, and he thought that it was an animated feature. <laughs> oh, but it's still great film. I recommend it. Whole heart. 
All right, all right. So, I'm going to start off with, I believe, what I started off with last week, which is I placed an order uh, on Amazon specifically for one particular film, and I come to find out this film that was a buy two, get one deal. So I bought a bunch of stuff to get free stuff. And the first three items that I'm going to show are the cheap ones from that sale. Uh, so they were not as big of a deal, but, you know, I got one of them for free, and that's kind of cool. The others were a little pricier. But the first one was a much-needed upgrade. I do have this on DVD, but this will take up a little less room and possibly look better. And that is the classic TV miniseries of Stephen King's The Stand, the original 90s version that starred Gary Sinise, J Jamie Sheridan, Laura San Giacomo, Ray Walston, uh, Miguel Ferrer, Ossie Davis, Ruby D, Rob Lowe, and a woefully miscast Molly Ringwald. <laughs> and... It's an excellent film. I really like this presentation of Randall Flagg. I think he's a fun version. One thing this actually added to the book was that nice Rolling Stones reference where Flagg said, um, glad to meet you. I hope you know my name or something like that, which I really love that, uh, that reference there. That was one of the improvements over the book, mostly the book is better, but the book is a indisputable classic. This is, as adaptations go, pretty serviceable. And glad to have it in a slightly neater, smaller, prettier package. <laughs> yeah, and that one is probably my favorite Stephen King book that's a non-Dark uh, Tower book. It, well, non-direct Dark Tower book. Yeah, I mean, one of the Dark Tower books is very directly referencing the stand. So, uh, yeah, they end up going through it in book four in, in yes. the world of the stand. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting how, how it plays. I really love how they play Blue Oyster Cult at the beginning mm -hmm. where you see all the bodies of the scientists dead and they're playing Don't Fear the Reaper. It's just an excellent way of starting <laughs> it. It's a classic... Yeah. Glad that you finally got a good copy of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this one was not on my... Uh, matter of fact, let me see here. Out of what I covered last time... Um, well, there was one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight out of, my, uh, out of the uh, 12 that we got covering here, or 13, I think, uh, are from last time. Mm, but, okay. Um, so this one here is one that I have a history with. Uh, with uh, Actually, my wife and I had been looking at uh, something to watch, and we were kind of bored, and we were just cycling through, and we saw this, and I'm like, eh, this keeps coming up in the recommended feed. I guess I'll check it out. And we checked out the first movie, and it was kind of, uh, it was kind of okay, and then we just kept watching it, and we ended up watching all of them together and that is bad ben and i looked around and yes uh the uh creator of this uh does put together a collection the bad ben collection which has um all but one of the films on it you can see uh, all of them are in this big case here and uh, the ones that you've got here are bad ben steel manville road which is the prequel, Batter Ben, Bad Ben the Mandela Effect, The Crescent Moon Clown, Bad Ben the Way In, and Bad Ben the Haunted Highway. On this also, you have um, uh, some bonus features, and then, of course, uh, you've got uh, some shorts, Bad Ben's Night Before Christmas, The Santa Zombie, and The Witch Bitch. <laughs> if you want to get your own copy of this, you can go to badben.com and order some Bad Ben memorabilia yourself. Now, there's also another movie that came out, and one of the 2021, so it's another 2020 watch for me. 
Mm -hmm. And that is Bad Band Pandemic. Help is only a video chat away. Maybe. <laughs> so uh, again, this one was kind of a come. It comes with one of the masks that they had of these. Uh, good, good, mem good reminder of the uh, uh, pandemic. We shouldn't really need that. But uh, it's essentially it's more of a bunch of uh, films by people by his Patreons. They all made short little horror films and they put them together. And he plays this um, kind of paranormal expert mm -hmm. and uh, he ends up uh, watching their videos and commenting on them now bad ben itself is about this guy he moves into this house that he's going to flip but it turns out that the house is very haunted and there's also the jersey devil and there's a demon and a whole bunch of weird stuff going on in this and he utilizes the security camera set up in his house to really milk that stuff to the bit to the biggest. I mean, that's a lot of films. That's like let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven films. So mm -hmm. eight films. Yes, eight films mm -hmm. <laughs> out of that little setup. So mm -hmm. awesome stuff right there. Good times. So a film that no doubt had a slightly higher budget. Uh, probably much of which went to securing the rights that uh, no doubt got us dinged as soon as our video was posted. That is a film by a uh, very, very, very talented director, Danny Boyle, and the, uh, the director of Slumdog Millionaire, Train Spotting, The Beach, uh, 127 Hours, a bunch of really random films. And in keeping with the theme of randomness, the writer of Love Actually, Richard Curtis, they have a film called Yesterday, which is a film in which Himesh Patel plays a young man named Jack Malik, who is an aspiring musician who can't get an audience to save his life until one day... After a blackout, not like he doesn't blackout, like there's a massive worldwide power blackout, he comes to realize he is now the only person who remembers the Beatles, <coughs> remembers their music, remembers anything. And he's sitting around with his friends, starts strumming yesterday, and they all look at him agog, like, that's the best thing you've ever played. Where did you come up with that? And he's like, I didn't. The Beatles did. Who? It's like, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the SNL sketch, that Celebrity Jeopardy with uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones. And there's like, the Beatles' white album is this color. And she's, she buzzes in. Who are the Beatles? Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. No, I'm asking you, who are the Beatles? I've never heard of them. <laughs> you know, but, but this is like a worldwide pandemic of that sort of... <laughs> it's a good film. It gets into, obviously, he becomes a superstar and starts wondering if he's made the right choice and all that stuff, you know, uh, milking their entire catalog of music for his personal gain. Uh, it's just a fun movie. It has some great music, some great performances. It is a crying shame that YouTube has to be so hard-nosed when it comes to music. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that was one of the uh, two big ones that YouTube yeah. yanked the video for. Yeah. Uh, I remember saying last time, it reminded me, uh, uh, the, the concept reminds me a little bit of the invention of lying in many ways. Right. Like how this one person has this one thing that they can do that nobody else mm -hmm. can do, and then mm -hmm. they, they eventually figure out how to take advantage of that. Right. Um, so these next two are, are new additions uh, to the list, mm -hmm. which okay. um, I had gotten... Uh, I had just uh, been saying in passing to Mo that, oh, yeah, these two things have been on my list for a long time. He's like, well, dude, I got some extra cash. I will send these to you. And I'm like, hmm. well, thanks a lot. And, of course, uh, thanks to um, uh, Drunken Master Studios for these. 
So I said, I've got to get to these right away because normally on my wish lists, these are both W's and I do these mm -hmm. in alphabetical order. You know how long it would take me? Same thing with, same thing with Schusterman Levine. Uh, you know, that would have taken me ages. Yep. So this here is the Vestron uh, number 11, volume 11, with the mm. Warlock collection. Mm. Now, uh, this is a three film set and the um, the the Blu-ray inside of this uh, of this uh, slipcover is the same cover, but I love that cover. Well, look at that; that is beautiful. Oh, it's pretty cool, yeah. And then, of course, all three films in this series, and the first film especially has a crap ton of of actual bonus features. It looks quite amazing. I really liked the first film. It scared the crap out of me as a kid, and mm. uh, I am curious about it now. So I, I will be looking forward to checking these out, hopefully the sooner than later. Yeah, I was 10 years old when, this, uh, when the first one originally came out. Mm -hmm. So just, just one of those that I most definitely need to check out. Have you heard of these? I've you heard of them. I know this has not been in your wheelhouse. Neither will the next one, but... <laughs> Probably not, but I've heard plenty about it, yeah. So I'm not 100% sure how much the next will be in my wheelhouse, but I've been curious about it for a while. Um, my library used to do... Um, I'm going to say used to do for right now, you know, asterisk, you know, after it. Obviously, they canceled last year because of the pandemic, but they were already thinking about changing it up a bit. They did do a Comic-Con. They were planning last year to do a Book-Con because I guess they figured that Comic-Con was going to be too exclusionary to people that aren't into comics. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't really agree with that call. But anyway, because I love the idea that we did a Comic-Con. Um, but they, the first year I worked it, I worked it at three, year, three or four years running, the first year I got to judge the costume contest and there was a very a series that was very popular that year and each subsequent year. And so that's kind of my first exposure to the web series that last time I visited with Septim, he sold me a good chunk of it. And that is the series Ruby, which I have volume one, volume two, volume three, Volume 4, and Volume 5 from him. And then, as luck would have it, this Buy 2, Get 1 sale offered up Volume 7 very cheaply. So, that happened. And then, the thing happened with YouTube pulling our video, and we had to sit on these for a week. In the meantime, I placed another order, and wouldn't you know, <laughs> volume six was really cheap. So now it's complete. So <laughs> it is now complete, as far as I know, up to what has been done. I don't know if they're continuing on or not, but um, I now have it. I've seen bits of this. We watched the trailer last week, and... Um, I'm not blown away by the graphics, but I do like the character designs, and I've heard generally positive things, so I'm curious. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's see here. Um, so the other one that was Vestron uh, that most mm -hmm. was one I have never seen, but I've always heard of. And I mm -hmm. wanted it because of the cover, but it was just always out of my wanting to buy it range which was mm -hmm. the uh, ninth of the Vestron releases, which is the Wishmaster Collection. Ah. So that's a four-film set, which includes Wishmaster, Wishmaster 2, Evil Never Dies, Wishmaster 3, Beyond the Gates of Hell, and Wishmaster, The Prophecy Fulfilled. A beautiful artwork on this. I mean, the cover mm -hmm. is just amazing i mean as you can see it's it just doesn't have the vestron thing at the top but vestron does some amazing stuff with their releases it, that first film you can see like look at the number of look at all the special features of, as compared to the <laughs> right. others right. 
but the it's just really cool stuff on it. I can't wait to dig into these. I have a long list to go, but we'll be getting into that long list a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, next up. This is one that I have been reading on for some time, and I just re and I just read the two most recent volumes that we have at the library, which chronologically get up to about the point where the second movie takes place. I've seen the first two movies, but I have not yet seen any of the show. But I have very much enjoyed what I've seen of My Hero Academia. And when they had season one, the complete series collection of season one, they had that as part of the sale. I was like, I must get this. Um, I would have liked the really pretty deluxe edition ones, but I did not want to pay as much as Funimation wanted for that. This works. It's perfectly serviceable. Now that I have it, I have fewer excuses not to watch it. <laughs> and I certainly hope that I get to soon. <laughs> it is such a good series. Right. But you have at least, you've gotten a lot farther in the story than I have. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've only watched the anime up through season four and the two mm -hmm. movies, but that's still behind where they are in the manga, right. which I've heard is coming to an end, but, uh, right. I got this thing a while back, which, uh, yeah. which had it's it cool there. and Walmart had it for 62 bucks with the first mm -hmm. three seasons. And that's still that's pretty, pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty darn good deal for those three because that's season yeah. one and season two complete collections and the right. season three were the two parters. So right. that's to you, me... You still got the better deal. But so, some of the bonus stuff I got maybe makes yeah. it better. <laughs> and this here is like freaking mm -hmm. expensive now. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but, the only uh, thing is that box is not built to be opened. It is not, and yeah. Uh, yeah. they put those like restrictors on it. Yeah, you know what I mean, like the like ties on it that Walmart mm -hmm. sometimes does. But you can see where it's got the little bendy. Yeah, it's like it's sad, and I don't open this very often. I'll yeah. probably open it enough to take the stuff out to watch it, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't plan on digging into it very often. That's for sure. I have mm -hmm. taken it out once just to check mm -hmm. it out. So. But it is, it is really cool. It's, it's one of the most Western-feeling Western manga anime out there. It's, got not, it's not as much as um, Tiger and Bunny, but it definitely has yeah. that superhero comics vibe to it. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like Tiger and Bunny went too far Western uh in a lot of ways compared to mm. i feel like this is more of a combination between your typical it is. high school japanese anime with your mm -hmm. marvel superhero combination mm -hmm. so with that being said let's talk about video games so uh during black friday of course they had some amazing deals and some first title and third title uh party uh stuff for the switch so I picked up a number, and we saw some of this uh, a little bit in the past as I've been trying to do some video games each time. And this mm -hmm. one is Mario plus Rabbids. Now, uh, this is a Best Buy one. I got this back when it was about 14 bucks, which is not a bad price for a full-on game with Mario in it. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a kind of cool thing. Mario! But this is a strategy game. Uh, it's a strategy game where you control uh, Mario and, and his uh, one, and his team, and of course these rabbits that are also from Rayman, dressed up as mm -hmm. uh, the characters. And it, it's a it is a wacky and fun experience. I've seen gameplay; it is cool. I am looking forward to trying to finally play this. So it's it's worth it in the end, I'm sure. <laughs> cool. Well, fourteen bucks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, another one that I got that I hadn't really been sure I would be able to get because you never really know with Arrow. 
but this is actually one of their legit American releases, and it was part of the sale, and uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to jump on that. This is actually an upgrade. I have a pretty basic DVD edition, and I get to upgrade to a nice Arrow Collector's Edition with a crap ton of bonus features on Blu-ray. Could do worse. And that, of course, is the classic sophomore film from Kevin Smith, Mall Rats, which I love that cover. That is a really great cover, kind of a comic feel to it, which makes perfect sense. And this has a crap ton of special features, which is very cool. And just all around, that is a nice addition. I have a small Arrow collection, mostly because I don't have a region flip free player yet. But this will be a very nice addition to it. And being that it is supposedly our region, it may get watched much sooner than some of the others. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at it, and of course Arrow had a sale not too long ago. Um, they had an mm. Easter sale. And I was like, okay, mm. well, I, I can't do that because all of them... And they, they clearly marked which ones were all region and which ones weren't. Uh, right. Which, uh, which is pretty easy because the 4Ks were all region and anything else was not. Um, but <laughs> there are a couple exceptions, like House. House is definitely a all region, even though it says mm -hmm. it's not. But mm. anything that doesn't have the little thing on it, I've never had a an Arrow release that wasn't marked as. Uh, do you have one that's actually marked region one that's a uh, that didn't play? <laughs> Let me see. Because uh, I have uh, okay, this one does have not have that little icon on the front. It and it does on, not play. What does it say the uh, region is? Well, it says region B. There you go. <laughs> but, but, you, but you yourself had said that usually they have, they have that little icon. Usually they do, yes. Usually. usually they do, but yeah. But you got to kind of check. And the American ones that they've sold, I don't buy from their site directly because the ones that they are the UK releases on their, mm -hmm. directly on their site. So you got to get a UK release. Mm. gambling with them. Yeah, um, but I do need to get a region for you. But, mm. but the American ones, definitely there. I mean, my weird mm -hmm. science, all those things, they're, they're definitely region mm -hmm. Um But speaking of some cool stuff, uh, so uh, this goes back a while. Uh, Dave had, um, I, I had... I had sent some stuff to Dave. I think it was When They Cry for a, uh, for a birthday gift. He's like, well, I've got mm -hmm. some stuff for you as well. And then he's just kind of like, well, I can't afford to send it to you right now. So he kept throwing stuff in there as he was going through the collection and thinning stuff out. So he kind of just uh, threw more and more stuff other than the three films I was looking for. So eventually I got this large box filled with stuff. But it's all used stuff. And you know I can't enter anything into my collection unless I've seen it. But mm -hmm. I've been very busy as of late with my viewing. <laughs> I'm not... Uh, I, I finally was able to sit down and watch one item. Ooh. And I've got stuff from Dave and uh, Dane and I think somebody else in there, which is just like, okay, so I've got a lot of stuff I've got to get a touch in. But this is a double feature, and this is very out of print, this uh, drive-in mm -hmm. feature of um, Fade to Black and Hell Knight. Well, I had Fade to Black mm -hmm. originally, but this is uh, pretty much just, a, it's a double-sided, which I don't like those, which is another one I was very not trusting of. I'm like, eh, it may not work, because uh, you never know what could happen. They get scratched so darn easy. Uh, mm -hmm. But I did try both of these movies, and both of them worked, and I was right. I, I am very tempted to get the uh, Vinegar Syndrome release of Fade to Black. It is an excellent film. It is an mm -hmm. amazing horror film. Not a lot of, like, gore. It's more just a basic, you know, slasher type thing. Mm -hmm. So it's more bloody, as you would say, more bloody than gory. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hell Knight, also really good uh, about this... Um, I mean, Fade to Black is about this guy who is... Uh, he's been kind of 
he's just kind of kicked around most of his life and he has got this obsession with movies just like all the types of movies Casablanca <laughs> this he kind of like takes some of the extra film reels he can because he's working out of these movie lots as a movie delivery person so he gets some mm -hmm. extra reels that they're not using anymore some of the films and he watches them he's got all this film memorabilia and everybody puts him down in his life everybody just like there until he eventually snaps and if I recall correctly he snaps for darn good reason I mean this dude is just literally kicked around constantly until he does and then he eventually starts committing murders kind of revenge murders against the people that have wronged him dressed up as different movie characters Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that was really cool. I, I really liked the aspect of it. I thought it was really excellent. I recommend it to you, actually, Jake. And I still have my copy of it. So if we ever do cover for Inside Movies Galore, I'll just give you that copy. And uh, <laughs> then you'll have it. And Hell Knight is about this, uh, about this group of people. You know, a Hell Knight, like a you know, sorority, for, fraternity type thing. Oh, yeah where part of the initiation is you have to stay the night in this kind of house where a bunch of murders occurred. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the murderers decide to come back into residence. And uh, mm -hmm. they're very happy of having people into their home. Um, it's pretty good. It is worthwhile. I, I have decided to keep this version of um, Fade to Black because mm -hmm. it has Hell Knight with it. So mm -hmm. it, it is uh, a glad addition to my collection. Excellent. All right. My next one is also a, uh, if you will, a replacement copy. Um, this is also an upgrade. Uh, part of that sale were a number of Criterion editions. And one of them is a film that I quite enjoy. Actually, probably one of my favorite films by Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock. And that is his film Notorious, which stars Cary Grant. Claude Rains and Ignorant Bergman. Basically, um, Bergman plays a woman um, who is drawn into a espionage plot by a CIA. Uh, was a CIA? Well, some sort of American agent, probably CIA, uh, who's played by Cary Grant. She is brought in to seduce and ultimately marry a South American industrialist who is, they believe, a Nazi in hiding, uh, played by Claude Rains. It's an excellent film, espionage thriller. Um, you know, one of uh, you know one of several that Hitchcock did, but I do think one of his better ones. And um, just a very fun movie. Uh, it has a pretty decent bit of bonus features. I think I mentioned in the last video that I'm a little wary about going whole hog and getting all the Hitchcock ones because I feel like they're almost guaranteed one day to do a Hitchcock collection. But it still seems like it's worth getting the good ones in the meantime, and this is certainly one of those. <laughs> A really cool looking release there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, this next one is a, uh, a Switch title that I had debated on and off, and I decided to go ahead and add this to the list this mm -hmm. time. And uh, Nintendo has been doing their best to port most of their uh, Wii, uh, Wii U catalog, which was their previous system that failed miserably, mm -hmm. to the Switch mm -hmm. because hardly anybody bought the Wii U. <laughs> and some of the ports, uh, it seems like all the ports are, they're selling them for a full 60 bucks, and some are worth it, and some are not, and this one was not worth it. Uh, but I got it on sale for a remarkably low price. I think it was 20 ish uh, when there, and I was like, well, with it being that low, Nintendo rarely does that with first party stuff, and this is first party, and that is New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Now, this does have some extra content with it, uh, where you have got, um, uh, of course, uh, Super Mario Brothers U. Uh, and I played the first uh, new Super Mario that they released on regular systems. It started out on the, it's kind of a revival of the side-scrolling Marios, because they'd gone 3D uh, for a while. 
with a, you know, with uh, God, Super Mario sixty four, which I'm sure you know that title. Um, mm hmm. So then on the uh, on their handheld system, they brought back the side scrolling with this uh, new Super Mario Brothers franchise. And they moved it to the Wii with one, which is the last one of those I played. And then the Wii U had this version. And also another game that they released for Luigi Month called uh, uh, Super Mario Luigi Brother. I mean, Luigi U, which they include in this. And they added an easy mode with uh, this uh, Toadette, which can use the magical crown to become a Princess Peach or Peachette. Mm. Peachette. Which you probably saw a lot of fan art of uh, Bowsette, where basically the idea yeah. of uh, you know, putting on the crown and becoming the hybrid uh, uh, Princess Peach and Bowser. So that was where that, that was from. weird that that was such a thing, but. <laughs> it's the internet. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm right. really glad to get this. I do like side scrolling Mario. I do think Mario Maker kind of mm -hmm. like ended the need for that, but I still find it fun. So I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to finally playing this. I wouldn't mind seeing more of those. Maybe a new Super Mario Brothers mm -hmm. collection would be kind of a cool thing to have. Right. So with that is an interesting sort of segue, um, a film that follows a man who probably would be very uh, well-versed in the Internet and images thereon uh, if he was around 40 years later. <laughs> uh, I finally picked up a film by Michelangelo Antonioni, his English language debut, which is the film Blow Up, which features David Hemmings as a fashion photographer. Uh, it supposedly does get into some um, pretty uh, racy uh uh, images. Uh, a much younger Vanessa Redgrave is part of the cast. Uh, apparently there's a cameo by the Yardbirds. That's kind of cool. Hmm. And um, generally this is supposed to be one of the classics of film. I have never seen it. I need to see it. I was overdue to get this. Uh, it's a pretty nice, lots of bonus features yeah. there. Pretty nice addition. Um I've been interested in this for some time. I'm not really, like, super stoked to see it because it never struck me as one I was going to love. But honestly, the setup sounds a little Hitchcocky, and basically the photographer unknowingly captures a death on film after following two lovers in a park, and then it becomes sort of a psychological mystery. So... There might be a, there might be something to pairing these and doing sort of a twofer there could be interesting. <laughs> very cool, very cool indeed. Mm -hmm. So this next one, I've got four four of these were on that by three um, mm -hmm. set, which you know you buy three so long as it was divisible by three, they took like a percentage off. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of cool. Um, so I had a whole bunch on it. Uh, I had more on the previous uh, attempt, but those will be uh, forthcoming later. Right. Um, but I ended up getting this horror collection, mm -hmm. which is a six-movie horror pack. I actually is, uh, though um, five of the movies I don't have, because one of them I do have, this is actually neutral space-wise in my collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of like it's two discs that you have here. Mm -hmm. So I got this for uh, one reason, really, more than anything, was getting uh, Earth Girls Are Easy on here, which, mm -hmm. I don't know, horror is kind of pushing it for some of these. Um because Earth Girls mm -hmm. Are Easy is one of uh, Jim Carrey's early film roles, um, and mm -hmm. it's a it's it's one that I've I've been needing to get this for a long time. It just I, I have, and then Fido, mm -hmm. which we showed the trailer for last time, it's a hilarious uh, film. It's mm -hmm. great. You could almost use it as a sequel to Shaun of the Dead because they kind of have the zombies domesticated at the end of Shaun of the Dead. So mm -hmm. this, 
this could actually be a good follow-up for that if you wanted to back those. This one's a little <laughs> bit more comedic than Shaun of the Dead was. But Shaun of the Dead tried to be more on the, when it was, you know, the horror comedy was closer mm -hmm. to the horror side of comedy. Mm -hmm. with, uh, definitely dry horror, I mean, dry comedy in there. Then, of course, there's the parents. Mm -hmm. Boy Eats Girl, which is funny, and maybe that's a good sequel to Warm Bodies. Uh, and then mm. uh, and Sundown, which looks to be a vampire flick. Mm. But also uh, Blood Diner, which is one I also have had on my list for a while because this is a remake of a Herschel Gordon-Levitt film, which is in my Feast collection. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that uh, Blood Diner is quite good. So I am looking forward to digging into this mm. and just checking this one out. It looks like cool, cool. All right, another one that I've been looking forward to checking out for some time that I really need to. Um, this is one that when we covered it a few, I don't know, I think it was a year ago, we I had said I'm going to be getting this, but I ended up waiting longer than expected. Um, and it's one that is a uh, supposedly an indisputable classic of the sci-fi uh, horror sort of group um and that is the the war of the worlds 1953 film but it does include the famed radio broadcast by orson wells that's one of the nice there's a lot of bonus features but it's nice that they have that um i have of course seen the spielberg remake but i've never actually seen this one so this is one i know i need to see i'm very glad to finally have it it'll be here waiting for me to uh Part of the thing is I really, 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 I started that project of when I was going through the criteria and I was going to watch everything and record a review. But the thing is, I just don't have time for that. Yeah. So I may have to just go ahead and watch all my Criterion films and come back to that later. I'd love to do that. I think it'd be a great project, but it would just take so much time. But I really do want to get them all watched at least. So this is definitely high on that list. <laughs> you know, I had a similar project that was on my list. This is back when I actually kept right. up with my releases. Right. Uh, that after I had watched everything once in the collection, mm -hmm. new and used, to make sure it all mm -hmm. worked well, mm -hmm. then I would go back and start the beginning alphabetically and watch mm -hmm. every disc and watch every mm. special feature on those discs, commentaries included, and then do a mm. full-on review of each and every title in the collection. Mm. Now, I started that a while back, and then, but this is when I, I had had few numbered stuff in my collection, and I think the only numbered one I had in the collection was nine ninety nine, um, right. back in those days. But, uh, yeah, I didn't. I don't think I'm ever going to get to that. I don't even know if I'm going to watch everything that I need to watch fresh in the collection anymore. It's just uh, too much. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if I'm going to get through Life goals. <laughs> yes. So I did, I did present this last time, and I look forward to throwing this box away finally. Okay. This is mm -hmm. this uh, crystal case for the 3DS. Mm-hmm. Speaking of projects, I also have video game projects. There's a part of me that says maybe you should dump the video games or dump the movies and, and just concentrate on one. I don't have the same video game collecting uh, uh, fervor mm -hmm. as say, uh, I have for movie collecting. Right. But I do uh, get what I really want video game-wise. And mm -hmm. I've got this project going now to where... I want to finally finish all the Final Fantasy and, and Dragon Quest games that I have not beaten. Now, that's not so bad. Uh, the way it is right now, I beat Final Fantasy 2, like the old school NES one. And that, God, that was a, that was, that's supposed to be the worst one in the series. And it is. It's a hard game to get through. It took me years to beat it. I did finally beat it. So I can say I've actually beaten Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Hmm. And then, uh, so the only ones I have left are Final Fantasy 3, the actual numbered one, not the one that came up for Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And then it skips all the way to Final, which I have, by the way, I do have that on my PC. I've got the Steam release, and I have the P 
PSP release. Then I have mm -hmm. Final Fantasy skips all the way up to 12, because I've beaten them all the way up to mm -hmm. then. I don't count the online mm -hmm. ones, so 11 and 14 can go to hell. Um, okay. So 12 was the one where I stopped, really, because 10 was the last one I really beat the crap out of. Technically, I have like uh, the side ones, like uh, the After Years for 4, and then the 13 sequels, which I haven't beaten 13 either, and I haven't beaten 15. But then there's Dragon mm -hmm. Quest, which I've beaten the first three. I beat that second game, which I also heard is the hardest one to beat in that one. Number two is bad. And I have... Nice. The only one that's not, that's not included in that one is 10, which is an online one. Mm -hmm. But the only one I've beaten after those three is 7. And they go up to 11, mm -hmm. basically. So I have, you know, 4, 5, 11. 6, 8, 9, and 11. And mm -hmm. all of them except for 11 are on this. Mm -hmm. And you can't really get them unless you've got an NES otherwise. And their better versions are on this. So this is a 3DS. Mm -hmm. So the 3DS is very uncomfortable to hold in my adult hands. Um, I'm not going to take it out of this case. But it's much smaller. It's basically that sized that you flip mm -hmm. open like this. So now mm -hmm. you've got this extra thing that holds on to it. So you can actually play. So when I get to those games, mm -hmm. after I beat Final Fantasy 3, which is next up in the list, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be hitting that. So, just a pretty cool thing there. Good times. Alright, so one of the things that has arrived in the past week, um, I decided to go back for a slight return, I probably shouldn't have, but I went back to see if there was still anything on that buy three, get one, buy two, get one, I mean. And no, there wasn't. But I did manage to find a handful of Criterion titles that were still on sale. And I also had a credit from that purchase that I was able to put toward a purchase. And so I said, okay, I can get this for less than I would if I waited for the half-off sale. I'm going to jump on it. And this is the film that is a good example of where I would, where buying a particular edition can be worth it because the film is public record, if I understand correctly, and you could do, you know, you can easily get hold of it but you wouldn't get all the cool bonus features and probably not the 4K restoration. <laughs> and that is the classic film by George A. Romero, The Night of the Living Dead, which just look at all those bonus features. Mm -hmm. I'm particularly intrigued by this one. It says, new program featuring Frank Darabont, Guillermo del Toro, and Robert Rodriguez. I'd like to hear what they have to say on this. But... This looks really cool. I've seen the film. It's a good film. It's a classic, you know. But uh, I just, it's a, also a major piece of film history. Oh, yeah. And they really went all out with this edition. So I'm very glad to have that one there. So many awesome things. Uh, you know, Romero yeah. was, uh, was an amazing individual. And for better or for worse, mm -hmm. He made the zombie uh, features what they are today. Right. And uh, also the fact that you have an African-American lead in the 60s. Yes. That is just, uh, and he's in a positive role. Yes. Uh, it's just amazing things. Great film. Well mm -hmm. worth having. And, he's, and one that's not Sidney Poitier. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of some interesting zombie stuff, um, I went ahead and did some upgrading and some thinning at the same time mm -hmm. with the uh, Edgar Wright uh, trilogy here. Because mm -hmm. the only one of these three films I had on Blu-ray is The World's End. The rest of them mm -hmm. I had on stripped-down DVD. Hot Fuzz I had in a really stripped-down, like, old library mm. copy DVD. Wow. So I was very glad to get these. Uh, of course, Shaun of the Dead being a, a classic uh, horror comedy. We talked about that. 
Hot Very Fuzz, nice. my favorite of the three. Just insane, hilarious cop comedy. It's good times. And, uh, and of course, World's End, which I like to watch back to back with This is the End, but this one's about a pub crawl uh, at the end of the world. And, and it ends in the pub named The World's End. Uh, I would say I would consider Shaun of the Dead and World's End to be about even quality, though many people would tell you differently. Um, but uh, Shaun of the Dead is much like one of, like the much like Blazing Saddles and the producers. I consider it overhyped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a really good film, but uh, mm -hmm. out of the three, Hot Fuzz is my favorite by far. So I've been looking mm -hmm. to do this. I debated the 4K. But this one on the sale, it just no brainer. Yeah. All right. So my next one up is the other one I picked up from Septum when I went over uh, that a uh, couple weeks back, and this is interesting because it's my first legit finish edition of anything, and that is the Woody Allen film A Rainy Day in New York which I know he had gotten because he really wanted the movie and there was no American release in sight. And almost as soon as he ordered it, I think they announced the American release. <laughs> but supposedly this edition should play. And if nothing else, I'll add it to the arrow pile of ones I'll play when I get a region free. But it's kind of cool to have a legit finish release just for something different. <laughs> And and, yeah, and I need to see it. It's, I mean, it's got a great cast. You got Elle Fanning, Selena Gomez, Jude Law, Diego Luna, Leah Schreiber, and Timothy Chalamet. And um, love him or hate him, Woody Allen knows how to make a good film. Oh, yeah. Uh, he oh, often yeah. makes great films. And uh, I look forward to seeing this eventually. And I'm uh, glad to have it you know, sitting on the shelf. And like I said, it's kind of cool to, you know, expand a little bit in terms of my uh, actual, um, I prefer to have American releases when possible, if only for homogeneity, kind of keeping everything, you know. But having a few British releases here and there, I've got a couple of legit Japanese releases, you know, it's kind of cool to mix it up now and then. <laughs> You know, I've only not seen two of his films. Uh, wow. Cafe Society, which I have mm -hmm. in the collection. Yeah. There used to be pretty much any of the Amazon ones, but I did watch Wonder Wheel, and I enjoyed that. And uh, the, so, yeah, Cafe Society and uh, the newest one that he has, which is in theaters, but mm -hmm. only in Europe because... Uh, because we, we won't uh, take it here because Court of Public Opinion has deemed him as guilty already, which is sad. Um, right. But, uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm sure it'll make its way over here eventually, the new one. I've heard it's a comedy, and I've heard it's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. So that would be Rifkin's Festival? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah. I've heard it made. It's made a decent amount of money in Spain. Right. I don't think it's. I don't think it's made back its budget yet. But uh, considering pandemic and all that stuff, and the fact that he's right. locked there, but most of his money is is made in Europe anyway. So, you know. Right. Hmm. Well, with that being said, um, somebody who's not uh, blocked here in the United States would be John Hughes. Um, mm -hmm. which uh, I got this uh, five film collection mm -hmm. and uh, I we talked about this a uh, little bit earlier on in the pickups it has uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles which was an upgrade because it had the Bare Bones DVD Ferris Bueller's mm -hmm. Day Off which was sore in need of an upgrade because it also was the Bare Bones DVD Pretty in Pink mm -hmm. Bare Bones DVD and then two that I don't have, she's having a baby and some kind of wonderful. And we talked about this last time, so it's kind of an update on what, what you guys didn't hear us talk about. Right. Now that I've upgraded this, now they're going to release uh, these. And sure enough, there was an announcement that they are releasing some anniversary steelbooks 
Hmm. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and I can't remember the other ones, but I know that one is definitely getting a Steelbook release in the near hmm. future, which is like, they they waited. They waited for me to upgrade. Yep, yep, yep. It just seems to happen that way. But I was able to, again, save right. the collection and still add two films at the same time and upgrade mm -hmm. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's That's just awesome right there. I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting that when it was on the sale because I need that too. I have Ferris Bueller, and I believe I have um, – it's pretty in pink, right? It's the other – I feel like I have a copy of that. I haven't yeah. watched it yet. I've never seen it. And, and there's, then there's – there's, there's actually – the only one that's not on one of these is uh, mm -hmm. 16 Candles. And that's got an Arrow release, believe it or not. Yeah, I knew one of them did. I think it was. <laughs> of course, Breakfast Club, I have the Criterion release, so that yeah. one's already as upgrades as it's going to get. But um, I would have liked to have gotten that. And the timing of that, when we first learned about that, was right after I had just finished Ready Player Two, which they visit a planet modeled on the films of John Hughes. <laughs> so I thought the timing of that was pretty great. But um, at any rate, uh, the next up is the one that triggered my knowledge of that sale in the first place. It's the one I was looking for, and when I saw it was on sale, I was like, okay. And that is one of our Oscar-nominated films from this year, Emerald Fennel's Promising Young Woman, which is nominated, I believe, for four, I want to double check because I always forget, it's four or five uh, Oscars, five. Um, Fennel, of course, is up for a history-making history directing nomination. She's the first female nominated for her first film, and she and Chloe Zhao are the first two nominated in the same year. You also have She Is Up Again for Original Screenplay, and she's one of four credited producers for the Best Picture nod. Got Carrie Mulligan, uh, the wife of the very, very talented Marcus Mumford, although she herself is very, very talented. Uh, she is up for, I think, her second Oscar nod for lead actress. First one for lead, I think. And... Um, Film edit, no, sorry, she was up for a lead for an education. Um, and then editing is the other nod for this one. So when I finally see this, I'll knock out a whole bunch of nominations. <laughs> but it's one I've heard a lot about, I'm very interested in. I know you've called it a revenge film, uh, and I think I've heard something similar yeah. to that. It's supposed to be pretty intense in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah. Very much a product of the post Me Too era, from what I hear, and um, I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> very much so. Hmm. Well, speaking of preparation work, um, hmm. of course we've been we've been working ahead with Inside Movies Galore, because of course mm -hmm. April is our viewer submission month. Mm -hmm. So we've got all those nailed down, but we also have our Meet the Cast. Uh, May and June, followed by uh, Dave and My Birthdays uh, there. So mm -hmm. we've been kind of outlining those ahead of time for us to um, just get on the ball because some of these were um, lesser knowns. And one of those was Dave's uh, submission, which was on this Toxie's Triple Feature. I had thought that it actually was not in anything other than VHS, but only under its original name. So this Toxie's triple feature has the film Croak, Frog Monster from Hell, which mm. is the uh, film, which of course, uh, the original name was Rana, Legend of Shadow Lake, which is the uh, film that Dave put forward, about this frog monster out for revenge. Mm -hmm. Then there's Horror of the Hungry Humongous Hungan, and uh, let's see here. It has Jack Palance in it, by the way. Hmm. Uh, then 
A Video Demons Do Psycho Town, which it does not have the original name on it, but I do know that that's not the original name of that. But I do like that. I do like that name. These look like fun movies. I do look forward to opening it up and uh, just going in. But having this brand new with this out of print is pretty good. I got it for a pretty decent deal. You can sometimes track these down for a decent price. And I've got like another one of these somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or I sold it. I can't remember. But um, <laughs> I do have a couple of the triple features, but I think it's in a different one. So okay. this is kind of cool. So this is number three of seven of these that were released. All right. So my next to last one, my next one, <laughs> is another preparation title. And this actually arrived today. So when you said at the last minute you wanted to add one at the last, you know, because it just arrived, I was like, oh, I wonder if my package has arrived. And what do you know it did? So <laughs> that worked out. Um, I placed an order, which is going to be my last pickup. It's a big one. But I had a couple of add-ons. And this one is also an Oscar nominee for four Oscars, sound, production design, music, and cinematography. A lot of people thought it could have and should have been up in some of the higher profile ones, but it made still a decent splash. And that is the Tom Hanks starring film uh, adaptation of the Paulette Giles best-selling book, News of the World. Um where basically five years after the Civil War, Captain Jefferson Kyle Kidd moves from town to town as a nonfiction storyteller, sharing the news from the far reaches of the globe. Meanwhile, he comes across a girl who's played by Helena Zengel, and a lot of people raved about her performance. They liked Hanks's. They raved about her. Yeah. But... Youngsters always get shafted at Oscar, just about. Uh, but she had been raised by the Kiowa, and now he is tasked with taking her back to her actual, like, blood family, which she doesn't want to do. <laughs> yeah. And it's supposedly a really good movie, and I, would, I very much want to see this. It's written and directed by Paul Greengrass. He usually makes pretty solid films. Uh, I had heard a lot about the book. I still haven't gotten around to it, but when I heard the movie was out, I was like, I will have to give this a look. And I am excited. These two are definitely on the priority pile to yeah. try and get them knocked out in the next week or so. <laughs> both excellent <laughs> films. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen both of them, and they are both exquisite. And this is coming from somebody who doesn't normally like Westerns. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I debated right. getting promising young woman. I may not get mm -hmm. it if it doesn't win the award, mm -hmm. and though it's very likely that she'll mm -hmm. win. It's just mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those that I just have a hard time watching. I just don't know how many times I'd watch that over. Um, mm -hmm. So my last uh, one that I have here mm -hmm. is a post-apocalyptic film. And when I when I uh, did my brief anime review of uh, Desert Punk. For animation, mm -hmm. I just re I realized that who this main character reminded me of. Mm. So that's the film, the uh, Don Johnson film, A Boy and His Dog. <laughs> uh, this is a uh, they had actually Shout Factory did a re-release of this now, uh, which you can see. Uh, beforehand, it was just uh, very, very out of print, had a really bare bones DVD. My father loved this film. Uh, this is back in the day when they did like lots of post-apocalyptic films. In the 70s and right. 80s, they did a sh metric ton of them. And this is about a boy who reminds me a lot of the main character, Desert Punk. Because hmm. uh, he, he, he thinks about two things, uh, surviving and getting laid. That's basically his, uh, his old mm -hmm. process. And then he has his dog, which during the nuclear uh, disaster develops psychic mm -hmm. powers so that he can talk. So uh, even the dog is trying to get on the action. And, um, well, in fairness, the dude from Desert Punk hangs out with someone that would put such thoughts into uh, people's yeah. heads. 
<laughs> so it's it's there. The characters aren't necessarily <laughs> likable, but it's uh, it is a classic of those. I really love the post-apocalyptic films of the time. I do really mm-hmm. want to collect almost all of them if I can. The Mad Maxes, these, uh, just you know, they they're fun. So, mm-hmm. and and um, actually, one of my picks for. Uh, for May is a post-apocalyptic one, but not this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. hmm. All right. So my last one, the big one. This is the uh, the one that triggered the most recent uh, Amazon order. Um, and I kind of went back and forth on this for a couple of weeks on trying to figure out exactly which version I was going to get. This is something a little different. It's not a DVD or Blu-ray. It's an actual uh, media device, uh, but one that I was sorely overdue for, and I haven't actually gotten it up and running yet. I nearly have it. In the next few days, it will come up and running. Uh, But we'll start with the box. Dun 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 Yes, new song. Samsung S20 FE, and I've already put it in its case, and, you know, it's got the little glass covers, so it's ready to go. It just needs to be turned on properly and updated. Part of the issue is I have zero desire to change my phone number, and that's a more complicated process than if you don't care. <laughs> so um, I've, I've got to get it some assistance in getting this up, up, up and running. But this, I had a crappy S7. It was not bad when I got it, but I've had this thing for like four years now. And that's an eternity in the life of a cell phone. Uh, I think it's freaking stupid. Stupid that they expect you to get a brand new eight hundred to thousand dollar phone every two years. Oh yeah, <sighs> shoot every year. If you're an Apple user. Yeah, <laughs> if you're, and this isn't even top of the line. I debated going top of the line, and I was like, I'd rather save four hundred bucks. <laughs> it's still pretty darn good. This is still light years ahead of where I am with S seven. Example. And this is important to me because I take a lot of nature pictures. And I get eight-time zoom max on this thing. This is supposed to have a 30-time zoom. So for birds, that's a huge difference. Now, the top of the line would have been a 100-time zoom. But, you know, by the time I get around to getting that, the top of the line will probably be a 200-time zoom. (laughs) <laughs> but whatever the case I do a lot of iNaturalist work and I want bird records and you just can't get good ones with 8 times zoom it's just yeah. and this is also supposed to have a really good night vision feature it's supposed to just generally be better and I look forward to finding out <laughs> <laughs> and who knows I may be able between this and the GoPro I may actually, I now have toys that will let me do some really nice videos if I find the time. (laughs) So you all have something to look forward to. (laughs) You know, if anything, you could use them in some of your upcoming ventures. Indeed. So with that being said, uh, Mm -hmm. I guess that's it. Uh, I can't really beat that. I've I've had my phone for a little while now, uh, Carby. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and, uh, I'm afraid I probably will not have a carpy background, but I do have my other cat backgrounds. You can't really fully eliminate the pictures here, but you got preacher there, <laughs> and then the other background, uh, like the when I open it up, I got spirit. But you can't oh, really no. see it on the computer, can you? That's too bad. Oh, no. I plan. Oh, no. I've got a couple of custom <laughs> uh, coffee mugs coming. And uh, yeah. I'll have to reveal those when we get them. Right. But um, right. with that being said, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Hit that like mm-hmm. button. Hit subscribe. And, of course, mm-hmm. share. 
But mm -hmm. we'll see you on the next one. Hopefully with a different slate of material next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>